Let's take a look at some reactions in which aldehydes and ketones behave as substrates, the targets of nucleophilic attack. Suppose we have this aldehyde and we introduce an alcohol in acid. The alcohol behaves as a nucleophile, attacking the carbonyl carbon. These pi electrons get pushed up as a lone pair on the oxygen. And since our solution is acidic, it won't be all too difficult for the oxygen to pick up a proton. Subsequently, the newly bonded alcohol loses its proton to neutralize the molecule's charge. This molecule is known as a hemiacetyl. It has one hydroxyl and one alkoxyl group. But we aren't done. The hydroxyl group can become protonated, and bringing in another alcohol, the alcohol attacks the carbon, sending the leaving group off. Once again, the alcohol is deprotonated. This molecule, with two alkoxyl groups, is an acetyl. A similar reaction occurs with ketones. When the alcohol comes in, it adds to the carbonyl, pushing a lone pair up on the oxygen, which takes on a negative charge and is subsequently protonated. The alcohol, on the other hand, is deprotonated. This molecule is known as a hemiketal, but again, we aren't done. The hydroxyl can be protonated. Bringing in another alcohol, it performs a nucleophilic attack, sending off the leaving group, and then coming over to the substrate to form a bond. And as always, the alkoxyl group is deprotonated. This final product is known as a ketal. Notice that the only difference between the ketal, formed from a ketone, and the acetyl, formed from an aldehyde, is that the acetyl has a lone hydrogen, while the ketal has an alkyl group. So what's the significance of acetyls and ketals? Well, they allow us to form what we call protecting groups. Say we are performing an organic synthesis of some molecule that contains an aldehyde. And suppose as part of this synthesis, we need to immerse the molecule in base. As soon as we immerse the molecule in base, the base will attack the carbonyl carbon, thereby destroying our aldehyde. But what if we need our aldehyde to remain intact? Well, rewind. Before putting the molecule in base, we can introduce this molecule, ethylene glycol, in acid. One end of the ethylene glycol will attack the carbonyl carbon, thereby forming a bond. This pushes these pi electrons up to the oxygen. The oxygen may then be protonated. The newly bonded oxygen has a positive charge, which may be neutralized via deprotonation, and we are left with a hemiacetyl, one hydroxyl and one alkoxyl group. The acidic environment can further protonate the hydroxyl, giving it a positive charge. Now, the other end of the ethylene glycol can attack the carbon simultaneously knocking off the leaving group. With the leaving group gone, the ethylene glycol has no problem forming its bond. And once the oxygen is deprotonated, we are left with an acetyl, with two alkoxyl groups. This molecule is now considered to be protected from base. If we immerse the molecule in base, this group will not be altered by the base. 
the ethylene glycol protects the molecule against reactions with the base. After the base is removed, immersion in acid will convert the acetyl back to the aldehyde. 